National Export Promotion Council heads to Togo to promote non-oil export. Just as the Central Bank of Nigeria and the Bankers Committee hold first export summit. Scarcity, President Mohamed Buhari approves the upward review in freight rate for transporters to alleviate the challenges of supply. This is Business Express coming to you on the network service of the NTA. I am Musa Abubakar. Good to have you join us. Now let's bring you up to speed with business development. The RT200 non-oil export intervention scheme of the Central Bank of Nigeria targeted at raising $200 billion through non-oil export sector within the next three to five years will open a stable and sustainable window for Nigeria to earn more foreign exchange apart from oil proceeds. Central Bank Governor Godwin Emefele stated this during an engagement with players in the non-oil export value chain in Lagos. Aboladi Salami reports. The fact that most of Nigeria's current sources of foreign exchange inflows were unreliable and perennially prone to down. The nation's monetary policy authority came up with the initiative to add value to exports facility, non-oil commodities expansion facility, and non-oil forex rebate scheme, as well as biannual non-oil exports summit. All the bottlenecks involved, whether we need to create dry ports or we need to get, create any type of port that is needed to expand and make export operation easy in Nigeria, we need your help. Emphasizing on the need to focus more attention on improving the non oil sector for foreign exchange earnings, Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonoli said challenges impeding smooth business operations around their Papa Corridor have been taken care of to ease facilitation of trade. But I'm happy to inform us that before the end of the year, Lagos should be handing over the lucky pots for the use of all Nigerians to also be able to increase the space for our export market. While analyzing possible ways to address the logistics constraints towards improving the non-oil sector, panelists in their submissions said for Nigeria to announce ideas on how to increase value and volume of exports, Factors limiting operations at the ports must be addressed. So I think we should adopt the concept of shared services like we did in banking and apply it to this real export challenge, but not as individual solutions, but as a cluster. The Non Oil Export Summit has as its team setting the roadmap towards achieving RT200 and Non Oil Exports for development. In Lagos, Abolade Salami. Uh, the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, NEPC, in collaboration with Nexport Trade, has established a Nigerian product showroom in Lome, Togo, to strengthen trade between both countries and the West African sub-region. Correspondent Comfort Amadou reports that the NEPC is leveraging on the product showroom in Lome to promote Nigerian products and access to markets in the sub-region, considering that Togo is a trade hub and top 10 export destinations to markets. Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger, Cote d'Ivoire, and other West African states. We intend to increase trade, export trade to Togo by about 30% in the next uh, by 2025, and that will give us about 
650 million dollars in 2025 at the end of 2025 with this trade house next portrait will serve as a kind of clearing house you know for manufactured goods what this means is that you you manufactured goods in nigeria we help you to create market in togo and link you up with your importers. What that means is that you're able to sell more, make more profit, earn foreign exchange, and all the multiplier effect of expanded trade. The packaging, the, 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 the variety. So we've got it all. All we need now is the total buy-in of those in positions of authority so that we can let our people just fly. The product showroom in Lome, Togo will serve as a hub where made in Nigerian products can be shipped, displayed and distributed within Lome and the West African states. On that note, let's take a trip to the commodities market. Now, President Muhammad Buhari has approved the upward review in freight rate for transporters to alleviate the challenges associated with the distribution of premium motor spirit nationwide. The approval was after due consultation with the industry-wide stakeholders at the instance of the Niger Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority. It is necessitated by the upswing in the global price of petroleum products, especially automotive gas oil and its implication on the cost of transport and premium motor spirit nationwide. The revised freight rate takes effect from 1st June 2022 while still maintaining the current regulated PMS pump price of 165 naira per liter. An interagency team is being constituted to ensure reconciliation and payment of outstanding transporters claims in line with the established payment procedure under the bridging fund scheme. Meanwhile, NMPC, the sole supply of PMS, has maintained it has over 32 days sufficiency in country. The increase in transporters' freight rate will further encourage Nigerian Association of Road Transport Owners and other stakeholders to deploy more trucks to transport PMS nationwide to ensure adequate supply of the product. Now to energy, the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, has re released a fresh report on crude oil production of its member countries, indicating that six countries increased their crude oil output, while seven countries declined in production. The information is contained in the OPEC monthly oil market report for May 2022. The report showed that crude oil output increased in Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, Angola, Algeria, Congo, while production in Libya, Nigeria, Iraq, Gabon, Venezuela, Iran, and Equatorial Guinea declined. The other power sector is one area that is most favored by the Federal Executive Council in terms of express approvals to improve the level of electricity supply. Despite these special considerations, grid collapse and near absence of electricity for hours or days has become a common experience. Joshua Gito in this report finds out what has been going wrong along the power value chain. On ambience in most homes and business outlets in Nigeria, as electricity customers wear long faces, while their profit literally disappears into generator smoke. Yeah, up to now, we never see light. Up to this time around, lights entirely is very difficult to get in this community. So we don't normally get lights most times in the community. In this our community, we are having serious challenge with uh, electricity. 
In spite of the new regime of service-based reflective tariff, power supply across service bands leaves much to be desired. We are not getting it right. People are only interested in revenue targets and not services. This is at variance with the good intention of Mr. President, and so the President should order immediate review of privatization. That is what we want. More worrisome is the frequent cases of grid collapse, resulting to nationwide power outage. Low power generation and vandalism of power infrastructure are among factors the distribution arm of electricity industry says are responsible for epileptic power supply being experienced in most franchise areas in recent times. We have struck up a new formula to balance such that as we supply to the areas that yield high revenue, we also supply a fair level. Out of the little we've got, I keep adding, to the areas where we think the revenue may not be so high, but they deserve to have power. While well, more investments to wrap up electricity generation and boost supply are ongoing, industry players observe that until challenges of lot rejection and stranded power are addressed, the investment will be a mirage. Sustaining gains in the sector, electricity customers believe should be translated to longer hours of supply in the bulbs. Joshua Ojitu. Now, oil prices aged low on Friday as demand concerns emerged following this week's rate hikes. Although persistent supply tightness and new sanctions on Iran limited the downside. Reuters reports that Brent crude futures fell 35 cents to $119, 46 cents a barrel earlier, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude futures fell to $117.16 a barrel, down 43 cents. And now to ensure increase in revenue mobilization through tax collection, the Federal Inland Revenue Service is strengthening collaboration with the United Kingdom's Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs team. Benny Adams reports that the team is in Nigeria to begin work in four key areas. Is not a first time meeting, but a return visit to show commitment to a beneficial partnership with Nigeria and the United Kingdom. It is about sharing information, knowledge, and experiences on businesses operating in both countries, centered on four key areas. It's looking at our data, transfer pricing, country by country reporting, and extractives, and those seem to me very, very good areas which are in our mutual interest. From the intelligence that we have exchanged, we've been making in millions of US dollars mm. in tax revenue. I cannot say on a weekly basis, but I think it has been on a monthly basis for some few months now. With Nigeria's 8% tax-to-GDP ratio among the lowest globally and the second lowest in Africa, the FRS boss seeks the support of the United Kingdom's Special Tax Operation Group in the advocacy for the harmonization of tax receipts. In Abuja, Benny Adams. Now, the proposed Court of Appeals Federal Inland Revenue Service Practice Directions 2022 is geared towards enhancing speedy dispensation of justice in tax matters. The president of the Court of Appeal Justice, Monica Dongman Mensam, affirmed this at the opening of a two day technical workshop for the review of the proposed Court of Appeal. Practice Directions 2022. She noted that the technical session took an in-depth review of the practice directions on tax matters, which will guide the conduct of appeals bordering on the operations of the FRS under its Establishment Act. The president of the court said that the apt collaboration is a testament to the willingness of the court under the present leadership to ensure efficient dispensation of justice. She said it will also govern matters brought before the court based on the application of the of enac enacted tax legislations in effect in Nigeria, as well as their applications to parties in any appeals brought before the appellate, appellate court. 
Now, Japan's Nikkei shed 2% in mixed Asia Pacific trading as investors weigh recession concerns. And Nikkei Oko has updates of global stock markets. Asian stocks struggled for direction this Friday following sharp declines on Wall Street as investors weighed the possibility of aggressive monetary policy tightening leading to a recession, says CNBC report. The Nikkei 225 in Japan fell 1.77% to close at 25,963. The Hansang Index rose 1.15%, while the Shanghai Composite was up 0.96%. European markets were higher but remained on course for a bruising week as global stocks reacted to policy tightening from major central banks. The DAX in Germany gained 0.66%, London's FTSE added 0.46% and the CAC 4 of France appreciated by 0.72%. In the U.S., stock futures rose modestly in early trade as Wall Street attempts to find its footing after a brutal week of selling. The moves came as investors are increasingly worried about the potential economic slowdown. The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 203 points. The S&P 500 advanced 0.89%, while Nasdaq 100 climbed 1.04%. In Africa, markets were in mixed territory, with some major stocks, including South Africa and Morocco, recording heavy losses in early trades. The bearish sentiment also extended to Kenya and Namibia, while Tunisia and Ghana stayed marginally positive. In addition to providing finance and capacity building for MSMEs in the last seven years, the present administration has gone further in creating platforms for exports of Nigerian goods and services. Benny Adams reports that one of such platforms is the opening of Nigerian trade houses around the continent through the Export for Survival Initiative. Not just African country. As my product in US, UK, yes, we do. We have... Is our product in U.S. But as much as we're in U.S., I want to still see volume going into U.S. I want to see volume in U.K. I want to be able to be part of those people, that product, that brand, that will bring be the face of Nigeria everywhere in the world. Kafilat Abimbola shares same dreams, aspirations, and possible actions with many entrepreneurs involved in production. While some have attained a level of actualization, others are still hopeful, just as government agencies attempt the needful. Go Global, Go Certification. And the essence of that program is to identify SMEs that are producing and their products are of a particular standard. So we initiated that program and connected them to various certifying bodies. And such bodies some of them are foreign, some of them are Nigerian. They came to Nigeria, look at those uh, products and their system, their processes of producing those products, and they issue them various forms of certifications. And the essence is to ensure that we empower our SMEs and also uh, reduce cases of rejection of our products in the international market. Efforts at promoting value addition and certification has aided the growth being experienced in the non-oil sector, which has recorded significant growth in quarter one 2022, driven by activities in the telecommunications, trade, finance and insurance. This is in addition to agriculture and manufacturing. A time will come we don't need this oil and we need non-oil export to survive. The recently passed Petroleum Industry Act and the Decade of Gas Initiative have repositioned Nigeria as an investment destination of choice in oil and gas. There are very recent engagements uh, between us and very many other potential uh, stakeholders so that we can build gas, we can liquefy it and set it into the international market, we can convert them into basic chemicals that the world needs, urea, methanol, fertilizer and so on. The global supply disruptions fueled by the war in Ukraine has driven upward prices of wheat, while shortage of crude oil products provides opportunity for Nigeria's crude.
There's a very popular saying in Africa that when you wake up is your morning. So I, I dare to say that it is time for us to wake up. I want to believe that if every government comes in and keep pushing this way, we will not just celebrate democracy at 23, we'll celebrate the best process of democracy so far because entrepreneurs that have benefited will genuinely tell you the truth that it has grown their business from whatever they have before to be a better position. Kafilat Abimbola and her peers have pledged to continue pushing efforts at increasing the volume of trade in on oil exports, just as government support is expected. Benny Adams, NTA News. Now to the capital market. The Nigerian exchange continued trading on a bearish note at the end of Friday's trading session. The all share index closed transaction at 51,778.08 basis point after shedding 1.12%. Market capitalization stood at 27.9 trillion naira. 241.1 million shares valued at 3.6 billion naira. Exchange hands in 5,043. Three deals. And now to cryptos. Bitcoin fell Thursday as a sell off in global risk assets resumed with crypto investors reeling from a dramatic plunge over the last few days that saw the world's largest cryptocurrency almost drop below $20,000. At 4 18 p.m. Eastern Time, Bitcoin was trading at around $21,000, down more than 3% in the past day, according to data from. Coin metrics, Bitcoin is sitting at levels not seen since late 2020. The digital currency is down more than 20% in the last week and has dropped more than 60% from its all-time high in November. The exchange rate at the peer-to-peer -peer market appreciated by 0.48% on Friday morning trading at 607 Naira to a dollar. Let's now see how much the Naira is exchanging for other currencies at the CBN official rate. That wraps Business Express for this week. Remember to keep in touch with us, so do send in your comments, observations, and suggestions. Also be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube on the NTS channel. Business Express returns Monday. I am Musa Wubakar.